Hey, what's up? My name is Tackless, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to do objective markers and um, how to kind of do story progression in general. This is a fairly simple tutorial. This is something that has come out of my pro um, Terminal Island development. But pretty much what we're going to be doing is first, we're going to be having three different story objectives that we're going to be doing. The first is we're going to interact with that computer, then we're going to kill that goblin, and then we're going to walk into that blue hovering circle thing. I figured this is a pretty good range of what your objectives may be, um, an interact, a kill, and a proximity. So also, if I press right bumper, I've got an objective marker that moves where I move so I always know where I'm supposed to go. So I will demonstrate how this works. So first we're going to go ahead and interact with this and we're going to hear a little jingle. And then we're going to kill this easily enough and then we'll walk into the circle and that's it now I didn't really I, I should have done that with the objective marker on but every time I finished an objective the uh, arrow moved so this is fairly easy to do step one is just to place all of your objects that you want in the world so I've got a computer here um, the only line of code is that when it's interacted it powers on that's all that this is this is just the normal goblin. I tweaked it so its aggro range is a little shorter, but that's it. There's no other modifications to that. And then for the proximity, I put down this effect, and then I pulled out a logic cube, went into the brain, went to sensors, turned on the detect sensor, and then lined up the detect sensor with where the edge of my uh, circle is. There we go. And then I've got my player here. I'll go ahead and start over with my player. Not many modifications I made to the player here. But um, let's start with a third person adventurer, as I usually do. Only change I'm making, and this is optional, this is just something I really like doing, is under once, we're gonna create a new global object variable called player. Player equals me. This is a lot easier than having to uh, use the in-world picker every time you want to select the player. And if you're going to be using more than one player model, then you're going to need to do this. Next, we've got our brain for the whole operation. I'll go ahead and delete that. So place the logic cube. So what we're going to do is first we're going to create a new numeric variable called story sequence so when story sequence is equal to zero which it will by default first we're gonna do once and we're gonna create a global um, object variable called objective this is where our marker is going to point to. Objective equals, and since this first story objective is the computer, we're gonna use the in-world picker to pick the computer. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the event that would cause the story to go forward. So when this computer has power, because um, as we saw earlier, when you interacted, it has power, we're going to do once global story sequence equals one. Be sure to put once here because um, if that computer could say have the power toggled and this was set to started to or just didn't have anything here at all, every time it was toggled the story would reset to here and that's not good. So this is pretty much the basis for the brain here. We're just gonna copy and paste this whole bit and change this from story sequence equals one. And then we're gonna change the objective to our goblin. Next, instead of terminal has power, we're gonna do when goblin is dead. And since story sequence one, we're gonna go to story sequence two. It's probably pretty easy to follow along. This really isn't as hard as it should be. Um, when story sequence, oh, come on. 
equals true, the objective is going to be that logic cube. Or you could do the effect, either one. It doesn't really matter. I'll do the logic cube. Then, when the logic cube, and this one is important, you pick the logic cube, not the effect. When logic cube detects our global player, then the story will progress to three. And I don't really have anything at three, so in order to get the objective to move, I'm going to do global story sequence when it is equal to three, which is the end of the game pretty much. Then the objective, uh, I might as well just make it itself. It'll be me because the brain is located right by where the player starts. So he'll be just making a full loop. Now we'll add a couple of nice little, nice little garnishes to make it nicer. Um, when, I'm just gonna copy and paste some of this. When story, sequence, has changed, we're gonna do started to, and we're gonna play a sound effect. This makes it simpler so you don't have to put a sound effect on every single one of these, these uh, sets of code, and it really saves you a lot of code. Um, started to, play sound, success. I'm gonna do that one, and we're gonna play it everywhere. All right, so that's pretty much the brain here. That's all it takes to get the uh, actual core of the game working. Um, next, we need to get our arrow working. So first, we're gonna place another logic cube. I'm gonna turn on snap for this. Scale it down to half size. And it's important not to rotate it because where it defaults pointing forward for Y is where you're gonna need to place your arrow. Place that, and then we're gonna look up triangle and scale it down kind of place it in front and once again without rotating it where the Y axis is pointing forward is where your triangle should be next we're going to attach triangle to logic cube and then we're gonna look at the properties of logic or the triangle turn collidable off and for the appearance, we're gonna turn uh, shadows off and visible off. Pretty much the same thing for the logic cube. We're gonna cast shadows off. Visible's already turned off, so we don't really need to worry about that. Then let's look at the brain of this bad boy. So uh, already we have our cube and it'll rotate like that, which is how we want it to rotate. There we go. So first, the position of this has to track the player. So position equals global player, I'll just copy paste it, position. Next, it needs to yaw quickly toward global objective. Okay. And now we need to give it its commands. So when, I'm just gonna assign it to right bumper. When right bumper pressed, we're going to do started to, and we'll pick the triangle. We don't want it to have the logic cube become visible because that would look really awkward, just the triangle. Um, let's see, where's appearance? Visible equals true. I'll we'll copy and paste that line of code. And when it's released, this will be false. There we go. I think that should be it. One last little thing worth mentioning is that since this logic cube is going to move to the player, it's going to move to the player's feet. So it's not a bad idea to raise the arrow up just to fuzz. Let's give it a shot. All right, so press the right bumper and it's pointing toward our computer. No matter how far away you get or if there's a barricade between you and it, uh, the arrow also won't interact with anything in the environment because it's non-collidable. Let's go over here, interact with it. 
hear the nice little ding, and it's pointing us to go kill the goblin. Let's go kill the goblin. Rotates to go over here, and we get pretty close to it, and then as soon as we walk in, it tells us to go back to where we started. Alright, so that's pretty much the whole tutorial. Fairly simple, I think everyone would agree. Um, something else that you could do is you could put a um, an icon above these story objectives. Pretty sure this should work. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I guess we'll find out. We'll do um, display. Now let's pick out a good icon. Go to the icons list here. Look for a good icon. I'm gonna be looking for something that tells me that this is a story objective. Um, let's see. They have a lot of icons. Let's do exclamation. Exclamation is good. Above global objective. This was my original plan for Terminal Island, was just to have these little displayed icons above the objectives. But the problem was is that the world was so big that the objective little icons would disappear if you got too far away. Let's give that a shot again. Yep. So as you can see, there's the little exclamation mark above the computer. Now it's worth mentioning, if I run far enough away, and I don't know if the world's big enough for me to test this fully, but if I run far enough away, that exclamation mark will just yeah, outright disappear. There it's getting really transparent. And then yeah, there it's just completely gone. So that's why we have the arrow, so that you always know where you're going. And it, this exclamation mark should move around normally as I interact with things, because it's using the same marker as the arrow. Yep. Exclamation mark over the goblin. Exclamation mark over the ring. Alright, there we go. And well, exclamation mark over nothing here. But So, that's the um, that's how you can do an objective and objective markers and arrows and whatnot. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Sorry, it's been a while since I made a tutorial. Life's been busy and uh, I got sick last time I was planning to make tutorials. So... Uh, thank you guys for watching. It's worth mentioning that Terminal Island got 6th place in the Developer Game Jam. I was super excited about that. It's currently sitting at over 4,500 downloads, making it, I think, my most downloaded world of all time. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you guys for all the feedback. I'm working on getting a patch out fairly soon within the next week or two to fix some bugs and get some PC control uh, issues squared away. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any requests for further tutorials, be quick to let me know, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks, I will see you guys later.